Hello everyone, this is Denise Adams. I'm glad to be with you today. Recently I did a post on um, what we're supposed to do as, as believers according to the book of Jeremiah. And I know that Jeremiah was an amazing prophet of God and many of you may be saying, well, how can I do that? I'm not a prophet. But we are the prophets of our own lives, amen? We are the prophets of our own lives and we can prophesy over situations and circumstances. And many don't understand the role of a prophet and what a prophet can do. So I wanna just talk about that for a minute to encourage you. You may be called to the office of a prophet and this may be insight for you, or you may be just uh, looking at it going, well, okay, so I need to learn about these different areas so that I can use that and um, change my life or change my world. Amen. So let's take a look at the book of Jeremiah. I'm in the first chapter and um, I, I'm going to go down to verse four and then we'll, we'll pick it up. It says, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Amen. Then I said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I can't speak. I'm just a child. But the Lord said, say not you're a child, for you shall go to all where I will send you. And whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. That's huge, isn't it? I'm going to go back over this, but I want to give you the word and then we'll go back over it. Don't be afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Amen. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched his mouth. And the Lord said unto him, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Now this um, verse 10 is really important. It says, See, I have set thee this day over the nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy to throw down, to build, and to plant. And then he went on to an example of teaching uh, Jeremiah how to see. He said, do you see, the, what do you see? And um, God showed him an almond branch, and uh, they went on from there. But I want to go back to verse 10. Well, let's go back to verse 4, actually, because there's so much in this. Many people don't believe that they have um, the God-given right to, um, to prophesy. And because we're born again and we have God's Spirit within us, and we're born of His Spirit, we can prophesy. We're to speak to the nations. How do I know that? If you look at the scriptures and look in Mark 11, 22 to 23, Jesus was teaching the apostles how to pray. He was teaching them what to do. He, he I, I talked to them about uh, uh, when you speak to the mountain, you know, speak to the mountain, say to the mountain. So he, saying to the mountain is speaking to the problem to change and declaring what you want to see. We have to declare what we want to see. Next thing is we see that um, God really wants you and I to speak just like that. In Luke chapter 10, uh, we saw him send out the 70 to do exactly the same thing, to um, root out, destroy, to, to uh, tear down walls and to set the people free. And that's what we're supposed to do, you and I, today. Hallelujah. We've been called by God to do that. Um, Matthew uh, or Mark uh, 16, um, if you look at the end of the chapter there, I believe it's verse 15 to 20, it talks about where to go and to heal the sick, cast out de uh, devils, and deal with things. So we have to deal with things, but we have to know that God has actually ordained that we deal with things. God has ordained that you and I are to um, speak to things and cause change to happen in the earth. We do it in His name. We do it, amen, in the name of Jesus. So there's some things you speak to, like sicknesses, you speak to sicknesses and command them to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to the Father, we ask for certain things, ask for wisdom, ask for insight, ask where we're going to go, who we're going to marry, uh, what, uh, where we're to, to um, 
uh, do ministry or what type of business we're supposed to be in or whether, you know, what we're to do in our lives. We ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask our Daddy and He will help us with those things. But there is a, there is a decreeing prayer that many people need to know about that they actually have the authority in the name of Jesus to do. And we see that, um, you know, um, Jeremiah says, oh, I'm just a child. I don't know how to do this. I, I can't speak. And that's the lie of the enemy. If you're born again, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, if he is your God, then he has given you a mouth and wisdom that all of your adversaries, every single one of them, not one, not one of them is not subject to, um, to this. All of your adversaries can neither gainsay, they, that means they can't deny it. They cannot de deny the God word in your mouth and they can't resist it. That means they have to listen and they have to obey. You, when you resist something, you say, no, I'm not going to do it. Or no, that, you, you can't make me nanny, nanny, nanny. And, you know, that type of an idea. But when you release the word of God against demonic forces, witchcraft, whatever, uh, uh, juju, um, voodoo, whatever, um, when you release hallelujah, the word of God over a situation or a person and command them to loose in the name of Jesus Christ. They must obey. They must obey the name of Jesus. They cannot deny the word of God and they cannot resist it. They have no ability to resist it. Hallelujah. I think that's a great place to have a praise break because many people don't realize that the enemy cannot resist the word of God in your mouth. Jesus has already defeated the enemy for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. But we need to decree and declare God's word so that uh, we can see fruit in our lives. He's given us his word. He says, go in my name. Deal with things. Get things done. He doesn't want us children any longer. He doesn't want us babes any longer. He wants us fully matured Christians. Now, um, being mature, um, the word in the Bible is perfect, but uh, that word perfect is actually mature. That means understanding, able to handle the word of life effectively and to bring change in the earth. So you've been given the right mouth. You have enough power right now to deal with any demonic force because God has given you authority over all of them because they are all already defeated. Glory to God, isn't that, that's a shouting day when you recognize that Jesus has done that for us, that we just need to tell them to, to leave, and uh, we have ways of doing that, amen? So he's, he's going to put his words in your mouth as you study his word to show yourself approved, amen, and a workman who is able to do the work you're called to do. We need that, we need that. So... Jesus was, um, well, Father God was talking to Jeremiah, rather, and he said, that, see, I've set this, the over kingdoms and nations. Now, you may have a family. You may, you may be a prayer warrior. If you're a prophet, you, some prophets are set over nations and kingdoms. Some are house prophets. There's all different types. But I want you to see yourself in the picture that if you have a family, you have a home, you have a life, um, you're part of a business, own a business, whatever, you have authority, you have power, you have dominion, and you can do these things in your home and in your business or wherever. And, and there's some things that he, he was telling uh, Jeremiah that he's speaking to us about today. And one of them is to root out. You know, we need to root out some things. Sometimes there's a hidden, a hidden enemy causing problems in our family. And, you know, like... A, um, one, for instance, is a spirit of rebellion. Now, and rebellion is like witchcraft. And that's like, whoa. Um, so we can root it out. Rooting it out is exposing it. Rooting it out is digging it out of the hidden places, exposing it and casting it out. Amen. We do that in the name of Jesus. We can say, I root out every spirit spirit of rebellion in the name of Jesus Christ out of my household and I, I call you out exposed and removed from my household in the name of Jesus Christ and as you believe that prayer and speak that word amen rebellion must leave it's very important we know who we are amen
Praise God. You can, um, you can also to pull down. So there's some strongholds you need to pull down. Maybe in our children's life, they've been acting a little funny and we need to pull down um, some things in their lives to help them to see the truth. Lord, I pull down every lie that has been before their face that has stopped them from enjoying um, the fruit of health that is theirs in you, in Jesus' name. You can say things like that. Lord, I pull down ADHD. Lord, I pull down um, um, whatever. You, you'll know in your home which one to pull down. I think it's important that we understand that we actually have the God-given authority and power to actually do these things in the name of Jesus. Sometimes our asking prayer, asking the Father to do what he has actually empowered you to do, has stopped people from having good success in their life. They're waiting on God to do it. He's waiting on you to say and to speak, to prophesy, to decree and to declare. Yes, there's asking prayer. Yes, there's prayers of submission. Yes, there's prayers of, of um, surrender. All those wonderful things. But there's commanding prayer. And to have change in the earth, you have to know what you're called to do and the work you're to do. So that when you release the word of God, you're, you're being effective. You're not waiting for God to show up. You're, you're uh, mature and you're handling that word well. You're releasing that word well. You're speaking God's word well so that things will really really change we all want change right amen sometimes you know family members or people you're working with have no idea that they are rebellious or that they're doing different things and sometimes you need to confront them on it absolutely it needs to be exposed it needs to be dealt with uh, god is uh, a gracious god a merciful god and he uh, so we too must be gracious and merciful and loving and kind and believing the best and trusting God for change in each and every person's life. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, when you remove the spirit of rebellion, things will change. Things will change. Amen. We can have an expectation. Praise God. So whatever it could be a spirit of fear. Some people may have a stronghold, a, a root, deeply rooted spirit of fear, and you have to root that thing out. In the name of Jesus Christ, you root it out and you send it out of people's lives. In the name of Jesus, you just, you deal with it to help them out. And um, can I say another word? Just, you know, sometimes people can be um, a little zealous in their preaching and sharing the word or whatever they're doing uh, or rooting out devils and things like that. And they don't do it privately. They do it publicly, and there's a time for that, but mostly it's supposed to be done with um, love and discretion, amen? Um, not every prayer meeting needs to be announced. Not every, um, not every, uh, everyone should be privy to the things you're rooting out and destroying, amen? And if you have someone who's a little stubborn or something's going on and you see some demonic force because you have the gift of discerning of spirits at work in you, then what do you do? You need to um, deal with it privately, amen, alone with the Lord, amen, and speak to those mountains in their life to bring change to their life. But then, you know, there's also a time when you need to sit down with a, a a gentle heart with compassion and mercy and great grace and speak to people regarding situations and you know I always teach everyone that correction is done privately praise is done publicly so we correct privately and we praise publicly when we do that we are you know we're being honoring we're being respectful we're being loving and that's always a good thing glory to God Hallelujah. Okay, so where are we here? Okay, verse 10, to root out and to pull down. Some things need to be pulled down. Uh, you know, sometimes the enemy puts a hood over people's eyes so they can't see the truth. Well, you have to pull off that hood. You have to pull off the, the, the darkness. You know, you can pull down the walls of darkness that have hindered people from seeing the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they be free to receive him that they be free to hear and to understand the truth, the truth, 
Amen. Know the truth about Jesus. You kind of get excited because he's so good. He's just so good. He is so good. And so there's uh, the next thing here is to end to destroy. So there's some things that need to be destroyed. You know, the plans and strategies of Satan do need to be destroyed. And when they're destroyed, they're utterly obliterated. So we can speak to every plan and uh, strategy of Satan and destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every witchcraft plant be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. We can come against these things with the fire and the power of God and call them destroyed in Jesus name. And because we're going according to the scripture that we can actually destroy things that the enemy has placed. We don't destroy people. We love people. We cherish people. We speak roughly to the devil. We speak boldly to the devil. Amen. And we speak gently to people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember one time I was asked to go pray for someone uh, who was in intensive care who had terminal cancer and they had just done a surgery just to prolong that person's life. And uh, then he also had a superbug at the same time and was, you know, in isolation in ICU. And so they asked if I would go see this guy. And I said, oh, oh, sure, I'll go pray for him. So I went down to pray for him. And they suited me up in all of the, you know, the, the gowns and gloves and slippers and hats and booties and you, you name it, the, all the gear. And I went in to pray for this guy who is semi-conscious. And so I said to him, listen, I'm going to pray a little differently than what you heard. I'm, I'm just going to command this cancer to die and, and be destroyed and pass out of your body in the name of Jesus with no harm to you. And so I started to pray. So he was prepared for it. And, you know, he, he opened one eye and kind of looked at me, you know. And it was really funny. But, you know, he lived. He didn't die. He lived and he didn't die. And... Um, Sometimes you reinforce that prayer also, uh, that they shall live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's God's word for them. That's not if they can uh, live or die, but they shall live and not die and declare the works of God. We can say that. We, can, we have authority with God's word. He's given us his word. We can use it well. Amen. I like the word that says, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation in Psalm 91. With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. So there has to be a satisfactory life there. You know, with long life, I will satisfy you. And if the, your life hasn't been satisfying lately, this is what we need to do. We need to say, whoa, Lord, this isn't satisfying. I thank you, Lord. Everything that is not satisfying in my life, I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God says I can have a long life and it will be a satisfying life. So I decree in the name of Jesus everything that's not satisfying to get out now in Jesus' name. And I declare and I decree that I shall have a good, long, satisfying life in the name of Jesus Christ. That's for someone out there. Amen. That's a good word. I like that already. Well, after we've, you know, we've rooted out, we've pulled down, after we've destroyed, after we've thrown some things down. Oh, hallelujah. You got to throw them down. Sometimes you just get them out of the way. Like, uh, you know, they see these guys with the machetes cutting through the jungle, creating a path. Sometimes you got to throw some things down. You got to uh, clear a path so for you to move. And as you do that, God will move with you. But then there's the building, and then there's the planting. So after you tear something down, you need to fill it with God's word. You know, as you as you command cancer to go in the name of Jesus Christ, what happens next? Then you say, Lord, I thank you. Your healing power is healing all the surrounding tissue. I thank you, Lord, that this person is being built up in your strength. Amen. I thank you, Lord, you're planting your word within this person, the word that they need that will give them strength and nourish them today in the name of Jesus Christ. And you say the words you want, not only to that God would build them up, but Lord, I thank you, your word says that they shall be strengthened with might in their inner man. They are of your flesh and of your bones and of your body. And thank you, Lord, that you are renewing their strength like the eagle. Those are real words that cause change in prayer. 
and the planting of the word is you can start planting words in them. They are the head and not the tail. They are above only and not beneath. You know, go to uh, Deuteronomy 28 and read the blessings. Speak the blessings over them. Decree the blessings over them. And you will see tremendous change, not only in your life, but in your family's life. Hallelujah. And then God went on to show uh, Jeremiah visions and dreams and wonderful things. And uh, you and I can can have that too. It belongs to us. We know in Joel, he says that, and the young men you know, dream dreams and there'll be visions. Actually, uh, Peter talked about it in Acts. And let me just go there. Let's look at the word of God and read what it says here. Because this is your portion. Amen. These are the things that we can do as believers over our own life, even now. So if we go to Acts, I believe, let me take a look here. Uh, let's see. I believe it's around Acts chapter 3. Hallelujah. Let me find it. Amen. Glory to God. He talks about Joel. Amen. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. There it is. That's in Acts 2.17. It's all in, it's all in pink right here. <laughs> Easy to find if you're looking. All right, Acts 17. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, rather. Um, but verse 16, let's go to 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in it shall come to pass in the last days. These are the last days. Say as God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Glory to God. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Mm. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Praise God. And I will show signs, uh, wonders in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. And it goes on. And verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So as we call on Jesus to save us, Jesus be the Lord of my life. He will come and he will do what he said he would do. So really you can have great expectation of miracle signs and wonders in your life. Be able to see visions, get insight, get wisdom. The Spirit has been poured on, on those. And listen, if you have not received the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Spirit, I want to pray for you today, right now, so that you can uh, prophesy and see visions and dream dreams and allow the Spirit of the living God to speak through you. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, for each and every one who is born again, I ask for those who want it, to be filled with the Spirit of the living God right now, that they will receive in the name of Jesus, they will receive your good Spirit, that not only they sealed with your Spirit because they are born again, but they are filled with your Spirit to the overflow, with the evidence and signs of speaking in tongues, that they would know what uh, the mysteries that you have released through them are, that as they speak in tongues, they will get a revelation of what you're saying in them and through them even. Give them that insight. Amen. I always pray that extra there so that people get an understanding when they start to speak in tongues that God is truly on the move and he's making changes for them. Hallelujah. That we're actually praying out the mysteries of God. And sometimes he lets us in on the mysteries. I love that. He gives us insight about what we're praying about. Sometimes we don't know. Some, it says if you don't know how to pray, pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues, the mysteries. And you know, God will give you pieces of wisdom and insight then to help you in your prayers. Oh, I've taught a lot today on a lot of different things, but I thought it was really necessary to do that, to bring some insight and wisdom. I really hope this has helped you today. I love you dearly. I love you so much. And I know the uh, anointing of God is on this uh, this time together. So le let me pray for you. Father, wherever they go, whatever they do, put them in remembrance of this word, Lord, that when they come across a situation 
or circumstance, they will know, uh, just as in Jeremiah, you spoke to Jeremiah, you're speaking to them, that they can do these things, that they can, they can uh, root out, they can destroy, they can throw down, they can um, uh, remove things in their lives and uh, plant and build as well. I thank you, Lord, for master builders, master planters, master women and men of God, fully mature to do your work now in the earth. And I bless them today in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you, and we will talk soon.